is I can never see you. I'm here. Why can't I see these? Ah, oh, there they are. Look at that. Oh, we've got beauty back now. The beast is still here. Uh, Zoe, um, let's just crack on with the next thing. David Lammy, not everybody's choice for foreign secretary, having called... Well, he's in trouble now because he's called Donald Trump an orange misogynistic racist. Anyway, he has apparently... Uh, David Lammy has urged an immediate ceasefire during an Israeli visit uh, with, um, uh, with Netanyahu, um, his visit to the, and the Palestinian territories, his first visit. Um, what, what do you make of this? I mean, we all are, it's abhorrent what we see out there, but um, maybe I'm not going to be very popular again. Doesn't a ceasefire only work if both sides want a ceasefire? And they don't. It's a terrorist organisation and Netanyahu's got an agenda. It's not going to work. Well, it's it's we know it is um, Labour policy now, not only to push for an immediate ceasefire, but also to recognise Palestine um, statehood. Uh, this is something Keir Starmer did, you know, almost immediately. He spoke to Netanyahu on the phone and the Palestinian president and, you know, re restated Labour's uh, push for a ceasefire and for statehood. Now, the question of whether that is going to make a difference in terms of the foreign policy of the Middle East, of Palestine or Israel, is a different question. But I think it is important for Labour uh, now, especially that they're in government, to really put forward this message to Netanyahu. Because um, it's not just um, citizens in the UK, citizens across the world who are getting increasingly um, upset about the images coming out of Gaza and want to see an end to this conflict, whether Netanyahu or indeed um, Palestine and Gaza and, 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 you know, Hamas will be able to facilitate that is a different question. But I think it is important that the UK does that kind of diplomacy because clearly there is a desire um, for them to do so. Um, maybe I'm missing the point and I don't disagree with anything you've said. I find, you know, I'll always go back because I've got many Jewish friends. I'll always go back to October the 7th when people tell me about the horrors that are absolutely, and you're right, happening uh, inside Gaza. I don't think anybody wants to see the humanitarian disaster. Uh, I don't think we should forget what Hamas did. They're a terrorist organisation funded by Iran. I don't think we should also forget, James, that Netanyahu, if he's not in power, is toast. So I think that's very, very relevant. But maybe you'll both disagree with me. We're not that powerful in the world anymore. They're not going to listen to us, are they? A terrorist organisation in Israel. They haven't listened to America. Why would they listen to the United Kingdom? James? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. I mean, I think that I said in the previous section that... Uh, the, the quote, more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repenteth. Well, David Lammy spent an awfully long time calling Brexiteers worse than Nazis, um, tweeting to Donald Trump, oh, well, some, some presidents have been assassinated, you snowflake, and things like that. And it's very good, good to see that he's largely uh, sorted out his act when it comes to talking on the world stage. He's been much more sensible in recent months, knowing he was mm -hmm. about to become foreign secretary with getting closer to the Americans, who are our closest allies. But just to weigh in on this issue in the Middle East, it's so complicated. And what right do we really have to talk about these kinds of things? I think we should be focusing on the things that Britain can have a big say in, which is supporting, I would say, Ukraine and, and galvanizing the rest of Europe to focus on that, because that's what we have in our power to do. But we know the reason why Labour are so interested in this, because so many of their former voters consider this to be more important than almost anything else. And, you know, when, when Labour fiddled around with parliamentary rules so as to try and get themselves to not have to vote on some of these issues because they didn't want to upset certain sections of their voter base, only to go and see some of their colleagues, some of the shadow front benches, as they were at the time, lose their seats yep. because all certain sections of society in Britain today care about is voting about Gaza. That's a very, very dangerous uh, issue closer to home that I think perhaps this new government should be focusing on rather than a conflict against a terrorist organisation. But, 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 but in, in defence, on two examples, I don't mean defence spending, both Lammy and Streeting today puberty blockers and Gaza. He's obviously going to speak out. He's the foreign secretary. Cameron did enough of that. They both seem to... I liked your phrase. He seems to have learnt the lesson. They're not walking around making... Well, they seem to be sticking to the script. I mean, we're only 10 days in, but, I mean, I thought we're streeting today. I know what you mean. I, I, I genuinely don't think anybody's going to listen to the United Kingdom. Netanyahu's not listening to America, though. He's hardly going to listen to us, is he? Uh, yeah, I, I think our uh, influence over uh, foreign policy in the Middle East, as you say, Jeremy, is, is just, it, it's it's fairly minimal. I mean, England mm. doesn't have the same, you know, the, the Great Britain's not the same place in the world it used to have. No. However, you know, I think James is right that this is politically toxic for Labour. We know that. We saw that in the general election. But, Jonathan Ashworth, you know, who thought Cameron... he'd have lost his seat? Jonathan Ashworth. Yeah. And do you know somebody, said, by the way, didn't say, I was going to say this to you two, Keir Starmer's majority went down from 27,000 to 11.
the, the, the Prime Minister. Ashworth lost. Mm -hmm. Jess Phillips, bless her, love her. She scraped by by a few hundred. I mean, there there are there are uh, sections in this country where it's just pro Gaza and you get elected. That's frightening, isn't it? It is an issue that matters to a to a big group of voters, and we saw that across the country. What I would say is when David Cameron was Foreign Secretary under the Conservative government, he was actually pretty bullshit with Netanyahu yeah. um, towards the end. He was saying, you know, what, what you are doing um, is, you know, wrong and we want to see an end to it. And there were lots of discussions about how much pressure the UK could put on Netanyahu. And I think in some ways, quite often, David Cameron seemed to outstrip David Lammy and actually being far more kind of critical uh, as I, I can't remember the phrase he used, but it was kind of like a critical ally or something um, in terms of how Netanyahu was responding in Gaza. But I think I think it's wrong to suggest that there are um, hordes of voters who only care about Gaza and therefore Labour are responding accordingly. I think it's really difficult, and I think the majority of voters in this country would agree that what's going on uh, in Gaza is is really really difficult to stomach, and they want to see the UK government. Um, but but am, am I am I saying that? Am I outrageous to say the following? Um, I absolutely want to nail this. I hate what I see in Gaza. But why can't people look be not beyond that and go, this is caused by an axis of power in this world, right? Right now, there, there is Russia, there is China, there is Iran funding these terrorist organisations. This is no longer made up, so this is, this is a fact. And whether it's Hezbollah or the Houthis or Hamas who murder and bomb innocent people, we, I think the world should be doing something about Iran. That's going to cause me all sorts of rubbish. But I'm just saying, absolutely, Gaza. But when people are saying, you know, let's sit down and talk with Hamas, we should really be trying to work out why these terrorist organisations are being funded and are being allowed to exist. That's not me supporting Netanyahu, by the way, because I think he's out the door. My Jewish friends say the only reason he's still in power is because he's out the door if he doesn't keep this going. I get that, and I get the fact that what's happening in Gaza is appalling. But, but, but if you don't deal with terrorist cells, they don't go away, do they, James? You have to do something, don't you? We live in a much more dangerous world than anybody in this little island wants to think about these days. I've actually met Benjamin Netanyahu and spoken to him about these sorts of things. That's a man who, for all his many faults and flaws, is very clear-eyed that his country lives in a perpetual state of existential crisis. It's only been through things like the Abraham Accords, where Israel was able to normalize its relationship with some countries because their fear of Iran, that it's you know it been improving in any way, shape or form. There's no sitting down with Hamas. They are an evil terrorist organization who need to be wiped off the face of the earth. And they also are to be blamed for every tragic child who has been killed in Gaza. But again, as you say, this uh, evil axis that does exist in a much more formal way than it ever has between Iran and China and Russia needs to be confronted and it can only be confronted through strength. That's not something we've prioritised in the UK for far too long. We need to increase, I think, our defence spending. We need to hold our noses and deal with some of the less savoury people around the world, whether you think that's Donald Trump or you think that's people in the United Arab Emirates or wherever else, because they are our allies against a very, very real evil. And I use that word very deliberately. Uh, just finally, uh, just for you, so from Richard, actually, he says, Lammy's problem is it doesn't matter what he says, we know what he thinks. Remember what I said the other day, but I want to put this uh, to you. This this is Richard in Truro. This is bizarre, but I get it. Here's my prediction. Remember where you heard it first, he says. When Lammy drops the ball as Foreign Secretary, which he undoubtedly will, I think Starmer will make, and I'll leave a gap, blank a lord and he'll be the new Foreign Secretary. Who do you think Richard in Truro thinks the blank is, Zoe? Uh, is it Mandelson? No, it's, that was a rumor, wasn't it's it? Tony yeah. Blair. Yes, it's Tony Blair. Yeah. Right okay. out the camera and playbook. So. I, don't, I don't think that. I don't think so. I think that's too politically... I think that's too contentious within mm. the Labour Party itself as well. Absolutely. And Mandelson think... was the real... Yeah, I heard that as well. I thought Tony Blair already really was the power. What? I thought Tony Blair already was really the power. The Tony Blair Institute has 700, 800 people all over the world. It's been writing Labour policy. It's been approving the new Labour MPs, formerly candidates. I thought Blair really was already in charge still, not to be... Is that right, Zoe? I haven't heard that. Is that right, Zoe? I, I, I think that's a slight overstatement, um, but it, but you know, they, absolutely, it is a matter of fact that uh, Keir Starmer talks to former prime ministers uh, such as Tony Blair um, and gets his input or his thoughts on Labour policy. Very interesting. You too. Sorry for the delay, Zoe, with the, the signal or anything, but delighted to have you on, JP. Zoe Grindelwald, thank you very much indeed.